Hi, today we'll be talking about how to use technology that comes with your Dexcom G6 continuous glucose monitor. So there are mobile apps and then there's also a desktop app. So today we'll start with the mobile apps. There are two that you can use and this is on an iPhone. So for an Android phone, it might look slightly different, but there is the Dexcom G6 app here on the left and then there's the Dexcom Clarity app on the right. And so we'll start with the Dexcom G6. So this is the app that shows you the real-time data that is coming from your sensor to your phone. Now, if you're using the handheld monitor that comes with it, that will look different. But if you do use your phone, this is what the mobile app will look like. So it'll this is the home screen, and it shows you first what your current glucose reading is. So mine is 178, it's a little high. And right next to the number, you'll see a little triangle. And so this is what your trend is. So if it's just pointing straight, that means your sugar levels are pretty steady. They're just going straight. As you can see in the graph, it's a somewhat straight line. But the arrow will also sometimes point up to show that your sugars are rising, or it'll point down to show that your sugars are dropping. And so this is a really good kind of quick indicator of what your blood sugar levels are doing. So that way you can either, you know, adjust for a high if you need to take insulin or adjust for a low if you need to go get some juice or a snack. So underneath the number, you'll see a graph. And on the bottom, it shows you the time. And on the um, side, it shows you the glucose meter numbers. And so this is milligrams per deciliter. And this is the graph that shows you, again, in real time, what your sugars have been doing for the past few hours up until now. And there's a couple different settings that are really important to know in this app. So we'll start with the events here at the bottom. So this is a really great way to log information that's important to talk to your doctor about during your appointments. So this is a way that you can kind of take notes and then share them and have access to them during your appointment. So we'll go ahead and click Add Event. And there's a few different options here. So this is a great way to log your insulin, to count your carbs, to track any exercise, and then any other health information that you want to include. And so there's fast-acting insulin and then long-acting insulin. And if you don't know which one you're using, you should ask your doctor, but there are some helpful tips if you click on one. So for the fast acting insulin, it tells you here, it's typically taken when dosing for meals or corrections. And here are some examples of fast act acting insulin. So if this doesn't sound like the insulin you're taking, then you can go back and look at the long acting insulin. And so you can just type in however many units you took for your meal. And if you're like me and you forget to log right when you take it, you can adjust the time and setting. So let's say I forgot to log my insulin yesterday, right before bed, I took 25 units. You can change that so that way you can go back and add it after you've taken it. Another event is carbs. So if you're carb counting, you can put in how many carbs you had for a meal. Let's say I'm having breakfast soon. So I know at like 10.30, I'm going to have about 15 grams. Oh, I guess you can't put it ahead of time. You can only put current time or backtrack. So that's good to know. But you can adjust the time. If, again, you forgot to log it right when you ate it, you can always go back and add it in later. So this is, again, really helpful. And it shows you yesterday, the past few days, what you've logged. So you can go back and look at it. Going back to the home screen. The other options you should know are under the settings at the bottom. So the, there's a lot of different things I want to highlight, but I'll start at the top with share. So share is a great way to exactly what it says, share your information, your data with a spouse or a partner or a caregiver. And if you're a parent and your child lives with diabetes, this is a great way that they can share their information with you so you can help keep track. It's super easy. You just click let's get started and it sh takes you step by step the process on setting up the other person's phone. So you just follow through 
and then it'll show up here that your share setting is on. Some other options are your alerts. And so it's always good practice to always have them on so you can hear when it's your sugars are going low, if they're going high, if there's any issues with your sensor, which is really important to know. And you can adjust these. So this is really important to know so you can personalize it to your settings because your threshold for low and for high is going to be different for you than it is for another person with diabetes. So we'll click on low here. And so you always want to have your low alert on just for your safety and for in case of emergencies. And here's where you can set it to notify you at what level you want to set for low. So the lowest you can go is 60, again, for your safety, but you can adjust it for as high as 100. So this is something that you'll want to discuss with your healthcare provider to see what you want your low and your high thresholds to be. So I'm going to put mine back to 70. And you can also change the sound. So you can make it as annoying, as loud, whatever will help you actually hear. And you can do the exact same thing for your high. So again, you want to have it on so that way it does alert you if your sugars are going above a certain level. And it's adjustable, so you can set it to whatever you and your doctor agree on. I think stand default, it comes to about 170 or 180. And so if you want that to be a little higher or lower, you can just go ahead and adjust that. And again, you can also change the sound to whatever you would like. Going back to our settings, there's also some really great information here. Your insertion time and your sensor expires time. So this shows you what time your sensor started. And again, these sensors last 10 days. So I started mine on the 12th, so it'll end on the 22nd. And this is really important information to know because say, for example, you're going off on vacation for a few days. This will help you know, do I need to pack another sensor with me? Will my sensor end while I'm away from home, while I'm away from a pharmacy? So that way you can plan ahead and make sure that you're ready for changing your sensor if you need to. The last option I want to highlight is the Calibrate. So the Dexcom G6 sensor does not require calibration. And so what calibration means is you'll test your blood sugar with a regular blood glucose monitor, and then you'll tell the sensor, here's what my real blood sugar number is to make sure that the number from your sensor and the number from your blood glucose monitor match as much as they can. So you just follow the steps here of washing your hands, taking your um, glucose readings as you normally would, and then enter it. And the software will make sure that it's calibrated to what your, sh your sugar readings were. And it makes your readings as accurate as possible. So these are just some of the major highlights of the G6 app. So again, this is the app that shows you what your current readings from your sensor are to your phone. Now, the other app, the Dexcom Clarity app, as I mentioned, is where all the information is stored after the 10 days are over. So when as you change your sensor out every 10 days, the information is stored here in this app. So it'll show you two days what your sugars have been, seven days, 14, 30, And 90. And so this is the information that you will show your doctor. This is information that you'll go through together. And if you're seeing your healthcare provider every three months, that's 90 days. Uh, this is a, where you can really make educated decisions on if you need to change your medications, if you need to, you know, see a nutritionist and so on. So it'll show you what your for the past. 90 days, so we have 90 selected, what your average glucose levels were, what the standard deviation was, and standard deviation just means plus or minus that number. So for this example, my blood glucose levels were 166 plus 34, 
so that my highest was around 194 or 166 minus 34 so it was around 130 for the lowest it also shows you your time and range so what percent of the time were you within the range that you set again that you want to discuss with your healthcare provider and so mine my target range was 70 to 180 so i was within that range 70 percent of the time i was above that 28 percent and i was really above that for two percent of the time so this is the information that you'll talk with your healthcare provider about to make those decisions on whether or not to make any adjustments you and this is um, the home screen so this is just a quick summary kind of a bird's eye view of what's going on with your blood glucose levels you can click on reports here at the bottom and get even more specific details so let's say for the 90 days i want to look at a report that shows my overview any daily patterns and overlays so you click view report it'll quickly generate it and again this is what the doctors would pull up on their computers and I believe you need to have internet to make this work, so it may not show it. But it'll essentially create like a PDF document that shows all your graphs for every day, the individual lines. And it'll show kind of like the Dexcom G6 app showed that graph with the line showing what your sugars look like, look like during the day. You can look at your goals. So this is really fun to look at because it'll show you what your best day was. So for me, my best day was February, February 7th, where I was in range within 70 and 180, 99% of the time, which is amazing. So that was my best day. And then it, it shows you what your goal is. So my goal is to be in range 70% of the time. And I did that 29 times in the past 90 days. So this is a really good way to kind of look look back and see what have I been doing and has that been helping me reach my goal. So if you click on details, it kind of shows you here for the past 90 days, each line, what you, whether you were within that range or not. So that's kind of the gist of the Clarity app. It's a great way to kind of look back and see how your blood sugars have been doing and how your diabetes management is going and make any adjustments if you need to. The other app is the desktop app. So if you don't have a mobile phone and if you use the handheld, you can still look at your past data if you go online to clarity.dexcom.com. And so this is what the page looks like. And you will just log in as a home user. log in with your account and if you don't have an account it's very easy to create one and it'll look very similar to the clarity mobile app so the home screen will show you your report overview so for the past 14 days what your average glucose was what your standard deviation was again that's plus or minus what your average is so my highest was about 190 and my lowest was about 130 it shows you your time and range, your sensor usage. So how many days did your continuous glucose monitor actually receive um, information? And it'll also sometimes show you patterns. So if, um, for example, if you always spike in the morning at a certain time, it would show you what that pattern is. And that's a good indication of, well, what are you doing at that time? Is it, are you exercising? Is it what you're having for breakfast that always causes this spike? And so it's a good way to look at your data and be able to make decisions on if there's any changes that you need to make in your lifestyle for your diabetes management. So here on the left-hand side, we can see if there's any patterns, if there's any trends. And so it shows you your average data and you can switch um, if you wanna look at specific days. So if, for example, weekends are harder for some people because you don't have to work, you don't have a regular routine. So maybe you wanna look at just the weekends, what your sugars are doing. If there's a specific time of day, if there's any events that you wanna specifically look for, any lows or highs, it'll show you here. 
and it'll also show you um, so if there's any patterns if uh, if there's any times that you're lower or higher than other times this is where it would show you that information you can also look if you want to really look into the individual data you can look at the overlay so it shows you each individual day color coded here so you can look at all your days together but if you only want to look at one day you can do that too and it shows you for specific weeks and that is adjustable if you click on this little pencil you can select if you want data from the past seven days the past 14 30 or 90 days just like the mobile app does you can look at daily information so individual graphs for each day on the past 14 days again you can change that as well if you want to compare days so say you started a new medication you want to compare what the day of your last medication was compared to the first day of your new medication, or if you're changing diets or workout routines, this is a good way to kind of compare kind of a before and after and see what that looks like. Statistics, if you're really interested, you can see the exact numbers of how many readings you got, um, what your mean glucose, your average glucose was, and then the bars show you that time and range. So green is time and range, Yellow is high, it shows you here. Red is very high, and then you have low and very low. So this is kind of the um, report section of the online desktop, desktop app. This is also where you can upload. So you would download a software. This is on a Mac, so for um, a PC and HP, this might look slightly different, but you'll plug in your, um, your Dexcom G6 monitor and be able to plug it into your computer. And with the software, it'll automatically upload your data to your website. So you'll see it in your report section. This also has a settings just like the mobile app did where you can adjust what your target range is. Um, you can adjust when your timeframes are. So if you wanna adjust your very low alarm, your very high alarm, that way it shows what your thresholds are. So in the graphs, you can kind of see what you're, if you're in that range. You can also see what clinics you're sharing your information with. So this is really helpful for you to know who's getting your data and what data they're getting. And last but not least, your support. So if you need help with uploading your data or understanding it and looking through or even logging in, this is a great way to go ahead and find whatever information or help that you need. So I hope this was helpful. Using Being able to have a CGM, CGM is definitely the first step to working on your diabetes management, but being able to interpret and understand what information it's giving you will really help you make those better decisions if you need to.